All right, let's see, are we rolling? Let's check the Twitch dashboard. It's always a good idea, right? Come on, ah, there we go, cool. So, um, I think we're good now, are we? Is it <laughs> let, me, let me just, let me just, uh, what I do? I'll, I'll just take Safari and uh, no. Um, <laughs> let me just make sure that everything is running as expected. So I want to screw up my videos later on, right? Come on. There we go. All right, I'm live. Um, so chat opened and um, I think we're basically good. <clears throat> right, so hi everyone. Um, if you don't know, my name's Tim and uh, I stream um, free JavaScript uh, full stack course or sometimes video games, but this time around I wanna talk about uh, setting up the project for um, development with React, React Router, Webpack, uh, Babel and you know all that kind of stuff. So basically, the uh, what do you what do you need to do to set up a front end project? And that's what we are going to do. Um, so where is my editor? So we got our um, server here. We don't really need to touch the server for now. I think in this uh, live stream we're just gonna set up the project itself and um, then basically prepare the core, you know, so to speak, uh, for um, writing the access to API and all that of all that kind of stuff. Why is it says that I'm offline? That is not, that is really weird. Am I actually online? I am now confused. <laughs> Come on, computer. Twitch TV. Yes, come on. Is it Twitch lagging or is it something wrong with my stream now? Right, okay, that seems to be working, cool. So, right, so let's continue. So today we're gonna set up the client-side project um, that will include Webpack, uh, that will include React, React Router, the new version, which I actually haven't touched yet. Uh, and basically I will show you how to uh, make all of that work and explain a bit, you know, what, um, what are all of those things? So I'm gonna create the client folder over here and um, I don't think we actually need all the other stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kill the atom here. I'm gonna go into the client folder and um, edit specifically this folder. There we go. Nice, so I'm gonna npm init the project here. This is gonna be experts uh, client. And uh, let's say it's a version 0 0.10, it's uh, experts, uh, oh my God, I'm always mistyped this word. So it's gonna be experts um, portal uh, client. Entry point is gonna be index.js, sure, why not? Test command we are skipping for now, repository. I am gonna go ahead and copy from here. Uh, keywords, um, we are, I mean, okay, let's let's add some keywords, why not? React router, webpack, tutorial, um, um, front end, I guess, makes sense, right? Um, that's gonna be MIT licensed, yes, this sounds good. So now that we have all of that, um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a new folder called source. Uh, this is where our sources are gonna be. Um, this is gonna be index.js, which is gonna be our entry point. And uh, next step is basically, um, yeah, right. So we, since this is, um, client side, we need the index HTML, obviously. So this is gonna be our um, index HTML. So I'm gonna use the snippet here and um, experts client. So gonna create a div here, uh, which is gonna be ID app. So this is gonna be our um, div where the app will be mounted basically. Uh, and um, then I am gonna say that we have a script and the source will point to app.min.js, which is gonna be our 
application script, right? So nothing fancy here, really straightforward. Um, I don't think we're gonna touch the HTML at all afterwards. So this is just basically gonna be the, the very simple setup. Right, so now what we need to do, we want Webpack, right? So I'm gonna install as a developer dependency uh, Webpack. Uh, Webpack itself is, uh, I mean, it's, you know, it's not a very complicated tool or very, um, in terms of, you know, what it do, what it does actually is not very complicated. The way it operates is a bit tricky. The idea behind Webpack is that uh, you can uh, create uh, Webpack config files that would bundle and uh, pack your app in any way by applying so-called loaders to all the files that go through it. So you specify the entry point, then Webpack goes through all the imports or required you do, applies the required loaders to it and injects all of that into HTML page that you want. Um, so uh, first we need web, uh, wait, I don't think, yeah, do we need webpack config? I think we do need webpack config. So here's the, here's the trick. Um, the webpack configuration file is a um, very large thing that is not too easy to write. So, uh, and since yeah, I'm a very lazy person, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead to my old project over here. And, um, no, Docker, go away. I don't want to update you now. Um, and I'm gonna steal my webpack config from there, I think. Let me let me have a quick look. Um, so we have this webpack config over here. This looks actually... Problem here is that I served the files from the same express server that I had the, um, the thing running. Okay, let me... Um, let me quickly think, do I have any other... I think it would be easier to just do that. Uh, do I have any other projects that I can borrow our uh, Webpack file from without having too much trouble? I think Xenice should have the um, um, Xenice 2.0 UI was built using the, uh, yeah, there we go. So I think that's what we want. And we have our Webpack config. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, copy that. So we're gonna create Webpack uh, config.js. Uh, and it's formatted with four spaces. So I'm just gonna run beautify. There we go, much nicer. And uh, we're missing some trading commas, which is not a big deal. All right, so let's have a look at the config. Um, so there's a few things in here you will see. Like, uh, first of all, you specify the debug mode in DevTools. Uh, obviously this is only helpful for debugging. Um, the DevTool, there is a number of them and you can have a look at uh, them in the uh, webpack config. In fact, I think the eval uh, source map is the old one. So let's have a look. I think there was a better one that is now more efficient. Um, to, to, to Dev tools. Yes, there we go. Uh, no, yeah, configuration option. That's exactly what I want. And uh, where is it? Dev tool. Ta ta ta. No, Dev tool module. That's not what I want. Line to line. Yeah, there we go. Um, I think it was cheap module source map yeah this was the one that was recommended for react uh, modules or react projects last time i read about it all right so next we specify the context which in this case is um, the resolve path which is a dear name plus src so this is our source entry point is already said going to be uh, src index.js uh, and uh, we are going to output everything into the dist folder public pass will be uh, slash dist. Uh, and this is actually, by the way, a good idea to say that this is gonna be dist admin.js. Uh, and the file name, resulting file name is gonna be admin.js. Uh, and then we are gonna uh, specify some additional things like the resolution options. So basically the root folder will be resolved to this current dear name. Uh, whatever we uh, search from basically root will be applied as, as this dear name. I, I don't think we're actually gonna need that here, but it's good to have anyway. We are going to automatically resolve extensions that are blank, .js, .jsx, and .json. Um, the thing is that I don't think we're gonna use JSX extension because it's kind of outdated and I'm not sure if we're gonna need JSON. I'm gonna leave that here. Um, we're also gonna say that the module directories are node modules. Uh, you can tweak that. I, I think that's actually default, so maybe we don't even need that, but I'm just gonna leave it like here. Uh, we don't need this part because we're not doing any uh, fancy, or we're not at least yet using any fancy node modules. 
All right, now let's have a look at the loader. So those are the things that basically parse the uh, files that has to be loaded uh, into your front end, right? So uh, the first one here is a style loader. As you can see, it applies to all the files ending with .css. So you can specify regex here and uh, it uses two loaders. First one is the CSS loaders. So all loaders are applied from right to left. So basically we'll uh, take the CSS file and then load it with the CSS loader, which I believe transforms it into the JavaScript, uh, injectable JavaScript um, thing. I, I'm not even sure actually anymore. Um, but basically the thing is that uh, you can always search webpack CSS minus loader, you know, style minus loader. You will find this specific loader and you can read what exactly it does. So uh, it basically interprets import and URL uh, references as requires and we'll try to find them if they are relative. Um, so that's what it does. And then style loader injects that loaded style into the page uh, because you know, you want to actually see your CSS over there. Right, um, the CSS loader also supports uh, modules syntax. So there is this way, where is it? CSS modules, there we go. So I think we are gonna use CSS modules over here. And to do that, we have to add that uh, question mark modules uh, query, I guess, to the uh, loader itself. So that will say, okay, use uh, modules. Uh, the problem if in doing that is that basically this will apply uh, CSS module syntax to all the CSS loaded, which is actually not something we want because by default, all the names of the CSS classes are local and will be translated to something like this. And uh, you know, if you load some like third party framework like uh, Bootstrap or whatever, um, using this, obviously the global CSS won't be accessible. So what we actually need is to create another um, CSS rule. And uh, here we have to say exclude um, node modules. So whatever contains node modules will not be loaded using the uh, module syntax. And then I believe it was include, and then it can basically say we include anything that has uh, node modules. So. I think actually the um, uh, shard had that thing uh, set up. So I'm gonna go ahead over here and uh, with my webpack thingy, uh, webpack config, I'm gonna have a quick look over here uh, just to make sure. Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually gonna copy this whole config uh, because I mean, you can actually specify the uh, local naming. So it's sort of a naming conversion. Um, and uh, yeah, I think this is gonna be better test. Uh, so we cannot think we just say uh, tests. Yeah, so basically we change the regex for testing, whatever starts with node or includes node modules and then ends with CSS as what we want to load is normal CSS. Right, so then we are gonna load our JavaScript using uh, Babel loader. Uh, and uh, basically we're gonna exclude uh, node modules because we are assuming all of them are actually uh, properly compiled to ES5, so we don't need to apply uh, Babel to them. I know that there are some modules that actually um, do that and publish their code as uh, ES6 plus whatever, and you have to load it with Babel. Uh, please don't do that. That is really painful to uh, make work with you know normal modules. So we are gonna just use good modules that don't do that stuff. Right, then we have a JSON loader. Uh, this is really straightforward. It just takes JSON and lets you load it as a, basically read the JSON file. So what it does is really straightforward. It reads the JSON file. And when you require it, it will just say, okay, here's the uh, JSON object as the output, quite simple. So then we are gonna use uh, those, or like I think this, 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 uh, those are font loaders. So as you can see here, we're using the simple URL loader. Uh, we limit the size of thing that is gonna be embedded into the file um, as blob to 10K. Um, if it's gonna be larger than that, it will gonna be moved into the dist folder and then just linked basically, you know, and it's gonna be loaded with mine type application font wolf. Uh, here goes the octet stream. And I think for this one, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then we're gonna do the same for images. So we're gonna load SVGs, PNGs and GIFs. If they are small, we're gonna embed them into the dist uh, js if not we're going to move them out and uh, they are going to be injected with the my my 
Is it mine type? Or is it, yeah, I think this is a terrible typo and I'm finding bugs in my old projects. That is, <laughs> that is always good. I mean, that always works. Right, so what else do we need? Um, yeah, the thing is that uh, you can, like when you're injecting the, when you're using the loaders, you can specify the kind of configs to queries. For example, if you need to, if you have uh, multiple uh, Babel RC files uh, for multiple things, you can actually specify the specific config for Babel in, uh, um, in the webpack. So I think we're going to do that because I don't really, you know, we don't really have any other Babel configs here. So we are going to just use the query here to um, specify the config, uh, different ones for production and for um, development. So I the thing is, so basically now this is the webpack config that works. Uh, the only problem is that we don't have uh, all those loaders and Babel plugins and everything else installed. So uh, if I say console um, log test, I think by default it actually should, it only will complain about Babel loader. So we're gonna do node modules bin webpack. And yeah, so it's gonna say uh, there's no Babel loader. So what we're gonna do is gonna save dev Babel loader. Uh, all the, the cool thing is that basically all um, lo like webpack loaders are have this postfix minus loader, so it's really easy to install them. You know, if you know the name here, you can just append minus loader to it and uh, npm install it, and it will work basically. Right. Uh, so we also need Babel uh, save dev Babel core. And we also need a whole bunch of presets here. Uh, so we're gonna Babel preset uh, ES2015, Babel preset react. Uh, I think we're gonna use stage zero here as well, just for fun. Babel preset stage zero. Uh, we are gonna use some plugins and uh, yeah, so there are additional so there's the Babel preset React uh, HMRE. This is the hot reload uh, preset for Babel, which basically allows you to have nice and cool hot reload um, while not but while basically having zero configuration. So let's see. Uh, this is yeah. So this is deprecated. They like transform HMR. I think this was still the actual one, yeah. So basically, um, this works well for us. Uh, just just to make sure you know that I don't um, include any outdated presets here. So we're gonna use preset React Optimize, which is a nice production preset which applies a bunch of optimizations for React. Uh, you can go ahead and read on it on uh, GitHub. And then uh, we need uh, Babel plugins, which optimize a bunch of things for us. I'm actually gonna remove this Lodash plugin for now. Um, Babel plugin, I don't remember what is this one. I think this one is the, uh, the uh, async await stuff. Wait, what's wrong with my internet? Oh, it seems to be working. Okay, Babel plugin transform runtime, externalized references to helpers and boot. Oh yeah, okay, right, this is the, um, yeah, it basically simplifies the Babel uh, injected code so it's a bit more compact and, and can be moved into you know, one separate function. So it's, it works better for the client, client side because you actually can optimize the size of your bundle. All right, so we got that. Uh, let's see, we have all of that. Now we need uh, npm install save dev JSON loader. Uh, what else do we need? We need URL loader and I think that's it loader. So this is, yep. Uh, I mean, you know, as you can see, there's uh, quite a lot of things you need to install to make the webpack work. And um, obviously Babel like presets are a thing. Okay, uh, we have GIFs, we have JSON, we have Babel. Ah, we have, uh, we need the save dev style loader and we need a CSS loader as well, right? Let me close that window, we're not using it anyway. Okay, and I think after that, it theoretically should compile. 
So come on, install it, and then I'm gonna run uh, webpack again. Uh, node modules bin webpack. There we go. Okay, so now in a dist we should have our app.js, and we have our console log test. Perfectly works perfectly fine. Uh, so there are. Uh, let's actually ignore the uh, dist folder here. And um, the question is basically wait. Uh, git ignore. I want to see no, please. I don't want to ignore everything. I want to ignore source dist, right? Uh, perfect. Okay. So we don't need that anymore. Um, all right. So we got the webpack uh, compiling our project, and uh, now we basically can uh, install React. So we can uh, save React. Uh, and uh, set up the React rendering, right? So, and um, I think it was, you need React and React um, DOM, right? Uh, getting started. Let's let's just take the getting started guide and copy it because you know that's the most sensible thing to do to get started quickly. Um, so yeah, React DOM render. We are gonna do it a bit more um, tricky, I guess, but uh, that's fine. So import react from uh, react, import react dom from uh, react dom. Have I saved react? No, I haven't installed react dom yet, right? So we're gonna get the react dom. Then we are gonna say that we have our app element, which uh, will be um, just, let, let's just move this over here. And uh, I guess we don't even, you know, I mean, it can be a variable, right? We don't even care. So we're gonna render the app and then we are gonna refactor this a tiny bit more. So render on uh, page, let's say um, diff and it's gonna be, what was it named app, I think, right? So you're gonna grab app here and diff is defined with never used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so we're gonna put diff here. And uh, we need to copy our, um, I guess it's gonna be better to copy it from server maybe. Yes, lint, copy it here. So we are, uh, what do we need? We need, yes, it's not a lot. Uh, yes, we need what? We need, first of all, we need to tweak that rule. Um, because I am not a fan of, let me just move it over here so we can jump from screen to screen easily. So what is it, React? I am like, you know, on one hand, it's kind of nice when you uh, limit your, uh, what, no, I copied you just now, React, React JS6 uh, file name extension, right? Can I make it off? No, what, what did I, did I screw it up or did it, uh, let me let me restart Atom really quickly. Sometimes it doesn't pick up the new ESLint configs for whatever reason, unless you restart it. Okay, um, come on. Right, so now we have only document not defined and I believe um, ESLint, uh, what was the, um, um, what was it called? Oh my God. Uh, was it context or something? Yes, lint document. Wait, let me just search for document not defined. I keep forgetting how you call those the environment or whatever. Uh, code, uh, yeah, environment, yeah, there we go. So it should be, it should be, I think, here in the top level. So we're gonna say we are in the browser, right? Cool, okay, now it works. So we got the ESLint set up. And uh, if we now, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna actually do the start method, which will say webpack and that's it. It's gonna do npm start. Uh, and we actually have our thing built. It's now really huge, 860 kilobytes, but you know, because this is all development build, so it's like, uh, with all the debugging uh, source maps and everything and full React binary and all that kind of stuff. 
And uh, if we actually start a simple server now, yes, I want a live Python to do that and go to localhost 8080, we should um, see our hello world message. So, and if we look into the, um, I think I better start the development uh, thing here. So if we go to localhost 8080 and I open our inspector uh, and I open the React add-on, you will actually see that, you know, we have our nice React component over here with uh, props children, which basically, you know, whatever we just rendered. So seems to be working nicely. The layout is exactly what we expect. Uh, some data attributes from React, but not as much as it used to have before. So, so basically it works now. Um, let's, uh, I guess, come, come on, kill it. Um, Git add this. No, uh, git status, git add client. Right, okay, it, um, did I screwed up the git ignore just now? It, no, git, not git sublime, just sublime. Uh, oh yeah, right, client, that should be client, right? Uh, git reset client dist, and perfect. So, git commit, uh, so we're gonna say set up client uh, basic client project with that pack babel and react but you know we actually used a whole bunch of uh, fancy things here like react reload and everything uh, which do not work now so if you change code you have to run npm start to actually see some changes right so that's not what we want we want to have like a proper live development so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go into our package JSON and say that the uh, start script is gonna be node serve JS and uh, I'm gonna create this serve JS file over here. But you know, actually, if you don't want more than just having React running, then this is really all what you need. I mean, webpack config is not maybe the simple one, but you can actually throw away mm, like this this part and I guess those parts unless you use some frameworks. So it's gonna be really like two loaders or three loaders style in CSS and Babel and that's it. Everything else is Babel configuration. So we can also remove the environment and plugins. And then it comes down to having like ES2015 and React presets and uh, that's it. Uh, yeah, one more point I wanted to touch on Basically, uh, some people was asking me if I'm gonna use uh, the Create React app, the, the new thingy from uh, Facebook, which is, by the way, quite awesome and uh, saves you a lot of time from setting all of those things up. But the thing is, uh, if you don't know how all of that stuff like Webpack and, and uh, Babel and uh, React hook reload works and all that kind of stuff, you are gonna have a hard time understanding the how to tweak the create React app properly. So, and since you know, we're kind of learning here, uh, I think that is better to just go from ground up and show you how exactly you set all of this up and what all, all of those loaders and everything means and how you tweak them. So that's why I am doing it uh, basically manually. Right, so, um, what we want after that is uh, React, wait, React uh, preset. I think there was a guide somewhere on how to properly use it. I, I, I mean, once again, I can just copy my uh, server from old projects, uh, which I might end up doing, but the thing is it would be nice to find where they actually reference that stuff. Uh, the production native, um, so yeah, this uh, tree on the horizon, you can try today. It's actually something new. I haven't seen that the hot loader three is soon here. Okay, that is a lot of discussions here, right? All right, seems like hot loader three is gonna be fun. So um, let's see how that goes. All right, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm well, like, whatever, I'll just, I'll just copy whatever I already did. Uh, so I think shard should have the serve script. Uh, no, not shard, this was nice probably. Let me think, uh, UI, yeah, it has this serve script. So I'm just gonna copy that and we're just gonna do the uh, quick walkthrough. Gonna beautify it to reformat it according to our style. 
Right, so um, what do we have here? Well, first of all, we need Express to serve our development build, right? Because um, for development, we want to be serving it locally, so we need a server for that. Uh, and did I just install it? Yep, and that's my screw up. Uh, let's go to the client. npm install save dev uh, express. So we need a express and then we need a bunch of uh, things. I don't think we're gonna need a proxy middleware here. So I'm gonna kill that for now. At least, you know, we don't need it now so we can um, see about that later on. We are, I am gonna, yeah, let's, let's just adjust the code a bit more to make it more concise because we don't actually need that much stuff on the screen. So this is gonna be error, uh, there we go. If it's an error and otherwise log. Cool, uh, so uh, we got some ESLint errors. So I'm gonna import, uh, what was it? No strenuous uh, dependencies. God, I hope I spelled that correctly. So I'm gonna off, uh, no wait, I, I think it wasn't off. Uh, there was a flag to say that dev dependencies are okay. Um, let me see, let me just copy that so that you can actually see what I'm doing there. There you go. Okay, uh, there was error. I think it was error dev dependencies true. Let's see. Uh, paste that and uh, like this, I think, right? Uh, it, that should be true. There we go. Okay, much better. And uh, I'm also gonna say Yes, lint no console for this specific case uh, false because you know this is a dev script and uh, unterminated comment. What? Why is it unterminated? Wait, what? Uh, oh, I. It should be zero, right? Yeah. Okay, that's my screw up. Okay, and uh, yeah, here's what we are gonna do here. Yeah, we start a stupid React, oh, or sorry, Express server. We serve the current folder as static. We serve the index um, HTML as for basically any request and we listen on port 300. And this is not the script that I actually wanted to use. Okay, now the question is, which project has the script I need? Um, let me ponder. I think, yeah, you know, which shard is, yeah, shard should have one, right? So because I used the odd reload and all the other stuff there as well. So I'm gonna do the webpack here. Yeah, there we go. That's exactly what I want. Okay, uh, so I need all of that. Uh, and uh, since I'm too lazy to set up webpack for, um, or sorry, Babel for, um, server side as well here since you know it's going to be like literally one script over here so i'm going to just use the old uh, syntax and require all of that stuff so um let's let's just do it this way equal require and uh we need what we have webpack why are you complaining because it's unused right so we need this uh PMI minus minus save dev. We need the whoops webpack dev hot middleware and uh, webpack hot middleware. So those are the webpack uh, middlewares for Express.js that allow you to do uh, like development and hot reloading. Um, we won't care about that for now. So those are all production or not production uh, setups. We are gonna copy that part. Um, and so this is computer run app use. Uh, wait, where is the server set up? Or is it? Ah, yeah, it plugged in in the other server. Okay, right, cool. So, uh, app get. So we're gonna paste it over here, I think. So basically, what we do here is create the compiler from the webpack using the config which we actually need to require, uh, it's gonna be what webpack config.js, right? Uh, this is the stand output config for the webpack. So I'm gonna uh, show you how it's applied in a second. I don't think we care about all of those things. So, oh yeah, we need to um, add these things here. So this is basically configuration for 
this is set up uh, hot reload basically and uh, no errors this is the hot reloads uh, hot module replacement plugin for webpack and this is the uh, setup uh, no errors plugin which is basically you uh, required by the react hot reload because it um, react hot reload has its own error reporting which you will actually see in the front end so we don't want any errors in the webpack area and then we have to change the config um, uh, entry for hot reload because it has to say okay here's our middleware first and then the actual entry uh, thingy i believe we have the app we just have the entry here and uh, i think here i used several entry points yes okay so in this case it's just gonna be uh, like this right so we convert entry from string to array uh, and append the uh, middleware in front of it all right uh, so what are we gonna do next after that if it's not production we're gonna apply our middleware and uh to, 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 no it should be over here right uh let's format that stuff so public path uh okay for production is just compilation but we don't care about production right now i'm gonna close that and we actually don't need that stat config for now because it's all no we don't need it so why does it oh it complains because i have poorly formatted there we go okay so uh, theoretically, if I do node serve now, we should uh, can read property push of undefined uh, because config plugins are undefined. Okay, so I'm gonna just create a new array for now. We'll see. We're probably gonna use more plugins later on. So let's just see how um, that works out. Trading commas and perfect. So theoretically, if we open the what let me just drag it to the third desktop uh, so if we reload that it, uh, it's now on 3000 right yeah there we go so theoretically if i did everything correct if i go over here hello hot reload and if i click save we should see the changes uh not quite immediately or does it work that does it, i mean it did recompile it so where's my changes all right, so I obviously screwed something up. Let's figure out what. <laughs> right, so we got middleware, we got uh, hot middleware, we got the compiler configured. Right, so what am I missing? Uh, webpack config, am I, am I missing something uh, from the config? Shard, uh, no, source, let's see, server, webpack, Let's see, uh, inline source map, blah, 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 roots. So we got this HIMRE, yes, that looks good. Raw JSON, I don't need about that stuff. Okay, that seems to be fine. Let me open the webpack folder and uh, let's have a look at the server again. So chunks, this is fine. It's not production yet. So we add the hot reload stuff. We configure the entry point uh dev tool yes yeah, so loader this is dedupe yeah okay that stuff looks fine app use yeah so it, it, it seems like it should work so why why doesn't it work okay Oh, I think I know why it doesn't work, uh, because we need to kill the dist folder because the React by default will serve the um, static files, right? So actually, I, I think if we actually move the static files after the middleware, it will hit the middleware first, serve statics, and then uh, serve, this is what we're interested in, and then it should work, right? There we go, so now we have the HMR connected actually, so it loaded the correct um, thing. Hello, hot reload, Re bleh, reload, there we go. And uh, couldn't update, yeah, because obviously the setup is now not perfect, so it's not exactly working as intended. Uh, but hey, um, it's actually working, um, at least, you know, if we create a proper, a proper class here, 
Um, I think basically what we can do is uh, we can do that, right? And then the hot reload should start working. If I remember correctly, no, that's still not. I guess it wants the wrapping container uh, or the parent container that would actually be the uh, basically will not be reloaded, right? Children, children, yes, and uh, app children, and then if we do uh, let me just see if I remember if I still remember how hot reload works. It's been ages since I touched the front end actually. Const components. Uh, there we go. So it's going to be equal. Yes. And then here we're going to say hello world. Uh, yeah. um, ah, and those are the wrong brackets, right? So it should be the. <laughs> so I'm gonna say components uh, close that and um, what wait what uh, right uh, that should not be h1 that should be div now there you go why is it doesn't like children children is missing props validation okay I don't care about props validation for now and uh, no still couldn't full reload required um, yeah, okay, I guess I guess it really wants the full like proper structure to work with hot reload, but you know, whatever, that's fine. So we are good for now. Hello world. Uh, so let's let's just say that we have our app here. And we don't need any more. Okay. Um, Git status. So what do we have? We rewritten the uh, we added the surf file and actually did I add it as a package JSON? Yeah, so we added the start command. So this will actually start a debugging now so we can um, commit that, I guess. Git commit. Um, so add uh, surf, like debug surf uh, script and use it for npm start, right? All right, so we set up the React, we set up the debug server, which has the hot reload and everything. So I think it's time to plug in the uh, React router. And uh, since there is now um, React router 4 is out, if you heard about that. So I have not touched it yet. So it's gonna be an interesting journey because I have no idea how the new one works. I heard this like complete API rewrite again. Uh, so that's what I'm uh, going to be uh, doing now. I'm going to be setting up the React Router version 4. And uh, since I have no idea how that works, we are going to go through the... Wait, what? 2.8? No. What? That doesn't seem to be right. Uh, no, wait. Not contributors. Uh, I want to see releases. 3.0 bit. Wait, what? Is it still... Oh, they haven't released it yet. So it's just the... Okay, um, do we want to use four for now or just gonna go with uh, version two? Uh, so what do you guys think? Should we go with four or for two? Just let me know in the chat. Okay, let me, while you are answering in the chat, I'm gonna go ahead and look at the version four uh, branch over here. I think this is the, maybe not. Uh, let's, let's, let's just look at the release. I think that should be, that should give us the good idea, right? So we need a release tag here and I wanna see the commit from it, yeah. So browse files. Okay, 402, are there actually any any dogs? Okay, so there are. Uh, oh, okay, they they use the now uh, for dogs. Okay, I see. That looks nice. Quick start. All right. npm cut in react. Oh, so they are now installing history as a separate dependency, which is interesting. Okay, I mean, I guess you know why not? Let's um, let's let's just use React Router four. Uh, just for the fun of it. I mean, it seems to be quite stable and I haven't heard any like major complaints about it. Uh, so it looks like the 
4002 is the version to use. So I'm gonna um, uninstall minus minus reactor to save. So I'm gonna kill the old one. And I'm gonna say uh, install the new one and uh, it's gonna be 4002. Uh, and it looks like we also need the history, right? Save history, so. Uh, before that, the version two and three, I think bundled the history actually together with the router, but it seems to be completely new one. File loader, uh, I think we also need, yeah, that's, that's uh, we have unmet dependencies, which is never nice. So let's install that file loader that is required. I guess this is required by uh, URL loader or something. So it's always nice to have it. All right, so let's see what we have here. So we have React and React DOM already. Um, so we're gonna import React Router here. Uh, and uh, I am gonna create our app component here. So I'm gonna say that this is our app. And uh, actually, since I'm a lazy person, I'm just gonna, you know, um, copy paste all my old projects uh, and improve them if needed, uh, because this is the way to go from my perspective. So we're gonna, yeah, the the app component is essentially just a basic wrapper. So it just inserts the top diff. And you know, the thing is that basically once you have that, you can actually um, tweak it, you know, if you have any styling or any like other additional properties you wanna pass, you can actually do that all on the app component. So we are gonna, uh, this is gonna be NPM packages, right? And this is gonna be our packages and uh, we're gonna import app from app.js. Uh, and uh, yeah, the question is basically how do we use this, uh, we have router parts afterwards, so let's see. So yeah, this is our app. Okay, router is used in the app as a component. All right, uh, render a router, it will listen to it changes automatically. So I guess we are gonna use that part inside of our app now, right? So let's paste that here. That means the top uh, component is gonna be router. All uh, right, and uh, so links is something we're gonna use in our different components, so we don't need that now. And then you have the match thing, which basically matches uh, patterns, right? So, okay, this is a... Uh, ta -da -ta. Do wanna render children anyway, because I guess... A good question. I mean, before I used to set it up, uh, let me just open the whole client thing here. Before I used to set it up in the, in this way that the app is a router, yeah, and then in the roots uh, you have components that are uh, referenced, right? So home is the page. Uh, there's a bunch of, basically it's a, you know, it's a React component that is then inserted and app was just a wrapper for the router itself uh, because yeah they required that thing before it looks like we might not need the app now at all so we actually uh, we actually need it but we don't need any diffs or you know we need, don't need to render children here so it's just a dummy or stupid uh, component basically Okay, so we are exactly match slash and it's gonna be home, yes. And then we're gonna make a new folder, it's gonna be called home. Uh, and it's gonna index.js. Uh, so we're gonna import react here and export default home, right? And uh, I'm gonna say that class home extends a react component. And then for now, we're just gonna give it a render method, which will return um, h1, hello world, right? So yeah, it's gonna complain for now, but uh, it's fine. So this is gonna be again npm packages, packages. And uh, here we're gonna be um, requiring our packages. And we are gonna import home from home, right? So that's what we want. So uh, we don't need links here. And uh, miss, I guess, is the no match page. So we're gonna do that as well. 
uh, and uh, I'm gonna duplicate that as not found. So you're gonna say page not uh, found and you know since I uh, know that this is gonna be a very dumb component I'm just gonna say export default is going to be an exported function that just returns this uh, h1 tag right because we don't really need any more from the not found page we're not going to have any logic here right and then uh, no uh, not found let's let's use the correct names uh, not found so not found that's what I want right so theoretically um, if we do npm start here and recreate and should not find null defined okay so I screwed something up somewhere question is where index.js 9 uh, uh huh so it doesn't like my uh, router why it doesn't like my router Let's have a look here. A uh, note: we are interested in the app itself, right? So it's exports a function that returns a router that just does match and miss, which seems just about the same as they do, right? So they have this app as well, and it's just a router. So what is it like? Um, should be not null undefined boolean or number. Well, I mean, it is not null undefined or boolean or number, right? So what the hell is going on? Uh, can we have a... Okay, you cannot inspect unless it loads. Index.js 9. Yeah, so this is our export exactly. Um, I don't know, does it want to have some sort of a body here? Tests, is that what you want? No, that doesn't help. Right, okay. Um, let's just make sure that we actually installed the correct version. Yes, yeah, so we have 402 and we have the history of 402. I, I imagine the history of versions match, so that should not be a problem for us. Okay, now the question is why doesn't it work? Um, let's see. Router, router, yes, so we have exactly the same structure. Uh, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, render app okay what the hell is going on here now um, yeah I need react here in the top level anyway react dom render app into the diff yes um, why it doesn't work should be not null undefined boolean or number. I mean, it should not be a null undefined boolean or number, right? So we invert a function and then invoke function as a component, right? Okay, so let me const app, let me just do, I'm, I'm, I'm curious now. So I'm gonna do that and then I am gonna reload. I am gonna go into the, Where's my you know, domain? No, that is that is um, index.js, and I want the one, this one, yeah, exactly. And I'm gonna put the breakpoint over here. Um, and yes, no, that's yeah, that's not what I wanted. Thousand breakpoints, yes. And uh, pauses on. Da, 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 da. Pause on code exceptions is something I do not want, and uh, it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't even get there. Okay, that, no, wait. The breakpoint is not even here. Any. Where? What is going on with my debugger? Now that's that's. Oh, I think I broke it. <laughs> okay. Oh, God damn it! That was a wrong button. Come on. Where's my my Twitch window? Come back. There we go. Okay, uh, let me reopen that. And uh, I am honestly very confused why this thing doesn't work. I mean, I just followed the docs and... Uh, no, okay, stop it. Now, why... Now, now you have it, but you don't even go there, right? So, is that's where you... All right, so let's walk through this. Uh, so now we have app, right? So an app should be the... 
the function that we defined uh, local scope module like reload experts react dom yeah so this is our app right it's an object which has a default function and it's a function perfect so that makes perfect sense then we get the diff and uh, and then it crashes so it cannot create this app thing? What? Wait, what? Um, all right, I mean, let's, let's try to wrap it in the div. Maybe that will help. I thought I could get rid of that div, but um, okay, let's remove that breakpoint. We don't need it anymore. And uh, we still get the same error, but that doesn't make any sense. So if I command all of that stuff, uh, yeah, obviously. Diff one to three. That works. Okay. So uh, I guess it wants some content in there. No, doesn't even matter. Okay, wait, where what the I am is it that the ruler match and miss are not defined or something? Is it because of the problems with import actually? So this is in our uh, app index.js, right? So we want to break point somewhere here, for example. Yes, yeah, so let's have a look at um, ruler match and miss. So where are they actually? This module children no um, exports that's not react react to what is that no react i guess they are under react router right no there are like so there's miss there is router is there router hash router browser router okay there is no router there right i see okay i mean um obviously that's what you get for using unreleased software. But you know, we started uh, trying to figure it out already. So let's uh, have a look here. So they do use router. They import it from, okay. So the problem is in these docs. So they import this router while there is none. But actually, if you go into the basic, they import the browser router. And uh, whoops. And if we use the browser router, so we're gonna, um, do that and we don't need the diffs anymore right theoretically so let's see they don't even have a router here in the api right of course uh so we don't need a base name here then blah 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 can see the ui hash router memory router server router okay cool so in theory this now match validation render valid react class or element uh okay not quite but we're closer at least this thing doesn't fail anymore Let's have a look at the basic example again. Um, match pattern and then component. So we have pattern and then component home and get pattern not found. So home is a da 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 da. Okay, so why, um, wait, what? Um, oh, right, that's the, that's the wrong address. This is the correct address. So where, the, God damn it! stop it. So where does it fails this time? Uh, index 11, no, this is something, I don't even know what. React mount, okay, this is a very long trace and we cannot really figure out where does it fail. So if we remove miss, for example. Okay, so it was the miss problem and not found, uh, did I define it? No, it expresses a function that just returns the page not found, right? So why the heck, um, I mean, that's let's try sure um x so let's say class not found extends um react component no but i mean that would then my lincher will complain that hey you should use stateless component which i mean that is absolutely correct in this case because we don't need any state here so but let's just check that uh render and export default not found, right? So that's what we want. Um, this 
Wait, no, you're not expecting this to be used. No, that still he doesn't like that anyway. Okay, so I guess the problem is not that. Oh man. As much as I like tinkering with new software, stuff like this gives me um, headaches. All right, now match pattern match. So they used in they have this miss thing, right? So we'll look at the API definition. Miss component no match no match location. Yeah, I mean that's you know what? That, let's just let's just even there we go. Let's just do that. I, like if that won't work, then I don't even know what to do. So. No, that doesn't work. Um, I regular null. Uh, I guess. May, wait, maybe maybe there is no miss as well. That will be very silly. But since we already encountered war one issue like that, I don't need invariant. I don't need warning. Yeah. So let's do a breakpoint here. And uh, no, there is a miss. Takes properties in context, which means it's a component, I guess. Uh, prototype react component yeah so it is a react component mm, prop types children component location render seems fine okay um, right so I get I mean <laughs> thinking should I continue fiddling with this or should I just go back to the version the the react root version 2 that actually works without any problems and have a like proper docs this is a bit fiddly. I can see why some people were not very happy with the new release. Because, I mean, you know, it's, it's we're not trying to do, like, any rocket science here. We're not even, like, trying to do the split, uh, like, code splitting or anything um, not found. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, command this. And then once they maybe release a newer version... I'm gonna kill the miss from here as well. So this works fine, right? Uh, yeah, I don't want debugging anymore. Thank you very much. And then if I uh, say create, let's duplicate it and call it other, just for the sake of it. Hello, other page. And then we rename this to other. Um, so we're gonna import, import other from other there we go and then uh, we are gonna match other here other here and uh, in home uh, I don't care about not found for now so we're gonna do hello world it's actually I'm, I'm curious let's let's try uh, let's try to convert that to a stateless component just to see if that actually works and uh, we want that div h1 hello world right and uh, then we're gonna have a react router link so da -da -da -da. i guess yeah i guess we just import link from a come here react router and we're gonna have a link uh what's the format here two okay uh other other right so theoretically that stuff should work oh no wait what wait does it not like two components here is that's why you're complaining wait so if i yes and um okay now i am I am confused. This thing is gonna miss, uh, and I'm gonna command those matches now and see if the miss works. Uh, no match, of course, uh, not found. There you go. So I'm gonna paste that, and theoretically, no, that also complains. What about other? No, that, 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 what, what? Okay, I guess it doesn't like my commenting out of the things. Um, okay, what if I do that? Page not found, so that works. Okay, cool. If I insert three of them, it will complain. Okay. If I only leave that, it works. Okay. If I 
do that, it, I assume, works as well. Yeah, so it doesn't like more than one component in there. <laughs> the next question is why? Okay, basic. Uh, oh, I think, so it does it basically expects only one top element there. That, why would you do that? That seems such a strange choice for API. Okay, and now that actually works. And if we do, yeah. Right, now I figured it out. Okay, that took some time to figure out. All right. Um, and there's, of course, no description of how the hell this works. Keeps your UI in sync with the browser history. The blah, 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 blah. And yeah, of course, there's no mentions. It's, it only accepts one. Uh, one nested component, which is the weirdest thing ever. Okay, uh, but well, we made it work and uh, we actually have the full navigation now. So we have the not found page, we have the home, we have the other link which works. Um, yeah, I think we can basically just say that other is a stateless component for now because we don't really care about logic here. We're, we're probably going to rename it and or remove it at all completely afterwards. I think renaming would work better. So we have stateless components here. We have stateless component here. Our app is now basically a router. The setup looks really nice and clean. Uh, maybe let's simplify it. Uh, because yeah, we don't really need all those variables, right? So we just render the app itself and this uh, page. And that's actually a really nice bootstrap file. I mean, I'm liking the new sort of approach to the AI, but the docs, oh my God. I mean, you should explain stuff like this in your documentation. Okay, um, let's actually check if the um, reloading works. Hello world, uh, other one or three, I don't know. No, it doesn't. Okay, so I guess I have uh, this is usually because the models which have changed do not have hot reload themselves. Okay, I think I had that problem already, but I don't remember how I solved that. Um, because, yeah, there isn't the React HMR actually applied. That's the question, also. So let's see. We got the status component, browser router. History actually, <laughs> so we got our match registry. Match. There is a ton of components actually that it injects, so it's interesting to look at that stuff. Okay, um, let me think what am I missing? Why the hot reload not working? It should be relatively simple, right? I mean, we inject that. Actually, I would prefer not to have that additional diff here, but hey, there's no way to get rid of that. So nested diffs forever, it's like <laughs> React way of things. Okay, um, let's see. What, what am I doing wrong? So first of all, let's commit. Uh, get commit setup basic React router. Uh, for uh, um, okay, let's set up basic routing using React Router 4, right? So we did that. Now let's try to figure out why the um, HMRE is not working. Am I missing some? Uh, yeah, so it should use the HMRE preset, right? Unless I'm messing up. The pack version, yeah, we got that stuff. Um, let's see, we got surf here. So we can actually for now do that as a color is true and uh, restart the web pack and it should now give a lot more information about what's going on. So normally you don't actually need to see all of that. But the thing is that you can actually see it's like basically it's useful to see for debugging purposes. Um, so there's the React stuff. Mm -hmm. React host, React server, so React. That's the React router. Yeah, the question is. So the React, it looks like the React preset is not being used or something. 
Now why it's not being used? That's a good question. So we got that and uh, I mean what we can try is let's see um, that pack and development. I don't remember if you actually need to tell him that you are in uh, development mode. As by the way, this is one of the best repositories related to the Webpack and how it works. It's uh, by Pete Hunt and uh, it's called Webpack How To. And it has some really good tips on how the Webpack works. So let's see, resolve, yeah, feature flags. I, I think, is that because I don't stringify the, let me, let me, let me, let me see really quickly here. So we got, no, this is the client, right? So uh, this is the app. Yeah, this is what I want to see. And I think here, um, process and yeah. So probably this is what we actually want to have, right? We need define plugin that will actually tell um, reload, uh, reload plugin. And then uh, this is this is the defined plugin uh, for node and uh, which passes down the node environmental uh, node and uh, environmental variable that is used in for example react if you pass node and equals production it will actually uh, apply a whole bunch of optimization so when you like do production builds you do have to pass that because then your build will be like 40 percent faster and like i don't remember like 60 percent smaller or something uh so maybe that's why it wants uh does that help so we have that and then if i remove that no Okay, now we actually have this hot, did that happen before? Yes, it did happen before. Okay, so this is the hot update map, but right, so why is that not, what am I missing? I have, okay, we added the five plugin, which is not exactly required. We add this hot middleware stuff. Uh, da -da 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 -da, module loaders, this is all production, we don't care public base hot middleware with a compiler, cool. So and then webpack config, uh, don't care about splitting for now, resolve module, so no parse, that doesn't matter. So we want what Babel, we cache it, uh, Lodash, Lodash, we don't use Lodash for now. Yeah, that seems about, the question is actually, did I, uh, wait, 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 did I use any end variables in shard in package JSON for testing? No, I only used the production for the production run. So whenever I tested it, I just started the index.js. Right, so what am I doing differently? Uh, we got this app and the index was basically bootstrapping the app. Yeah, so it, it looks very similar. So why the hell doesn't actually why does hot reloading not works? Render app, yeah, so we come here and then we come into home. Um, okay, that's the question. We got the table preset, preset HMRE. Let's have a look. Maybe I'm missing something from the uh, preset config. Um, save dev development, yes. Uh, HMRE examples, that seems useful. I mean, it's always good to Google and try to find what the hell are you doing wrong. Yeah, so there's using this transforms thing. So this is basically what the preset does, right? Uh, <laughs> React. Wait, no. Yeah, okay. So they use it just in line. That's actually a good idea. We can try to use it in line as well and see if that actually works. Or maybe the really the um, environment is not detected correctly. Uh, npm start. So there we go. And now if we just try to one three. No, it still doesn't work. 
Okay, so that means the environment is detected correctly. So the problem is somewhere else. Uh, we have that and we have that. Um, with express middlewares. Wait, is it or one or another? Like, can, can you cannot use both of them? I thought you need both of them actually. Three examples shown with transform, transform preset, and express middleware. So wait, does it mean I don't need that here? Is that why it screws up? Because they both try to do hot replacement? Am I being an idiot? No, okay. That's a good thing. Uh, did I actually restart the, no I didn't. Okay, let's see. No, okay. Now, why does that happen? Okay, I mean, cash should not affect that. Uh, let me ponder. Okay, I mean, hot reload is always such a pain to set up. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, web dev server set up quite yeah we have that right so we already inserted that we got react hmre preset we do insert those plugins so we have the webpack config we created the compiler let's have a look at the surf we say we use our dev middleware right yeah, this is the dev middleware. And we use the hot middleware, so both of them, right? Uh, we use the public path output. Yes, content base, so public path and uh, no info. Well, we use the stats config instead. Yes, yeah, I mean, that's exactly the setup I used before and that seems to like seemed to be working okay, but now it just doesn't, can it be, no wait, I am, I'm using the cheap model source map as well, right? Yeah. So why the hell does it not work? Context entry, uh, plugins. Now, what am I doing wrong here? So we create those plugins, we environment, model replacement, no errors. <sighs> right. Ah, wonderful world of React. Okay, let's see. Uh, blah, 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 React transformation mirror. Uh, model replacement with Webpack, hot reloading in React, the desk of React. Yeah, okay, this is a very old article, I know it. How does it work? Yeah, yeah, okay, this is all stuff. Yeah, this is the theory behind it, which says basically it should work. Mm. This is the great old article by Dan. Uh, reload is in hot replacement with um, the React presets HMRE. <laughs> so why are you not working i mean this one is been updated quite some time ago uh, it is a bit annoying it's like this stuff that just stops working after a few months of inactivity is always annoying. So what do we have here? We got hot loader on a three um, upgrade example. There we go. That's what we want, right? So we got the presets. Uh, we have hot loader Babel. Uh -huh. Okay. So we got the new thing here now. And we got the new, oh, okay, so it's just a container, uh, just the wrapper now, basically. Uh, which means it's gonna be a bit harder to set up. 
How the hell do you actually set this up if you want to do it for production? That's a bit... Uh, dun, dun, dun. Yeah, that seems a bit early to use because I see some shortcomings that might be in there. But why the hell does this not work? So wait, let's have a look at this HMRE thingy. So it uses the Babel React Transform and uses React Transform HMR and React Transform catch errors, right? React, red box. Um, do, 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 do. We don't have the dist folder anymore, so that's not interfering with anything. What's up with the Webpack config model is just da, 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 da. Babel, yes, React stage zero. Can be the stage zero or transform runtime interfere with something. No, transform runtime shouldn't interfere with something, right? But we can actually, what we can do is we can take that and move it into production because we don't only really care about those optimizations there. So if we just remove these things and uh, do that. So, okay, this works. Still, source index. Uh, so basically, it seems like the HMRE thing is not exactly applied correctly, and I have no idea why. It looks like this is um, an issue that I will have to wait. Why is it not? Can it be that this is because I use the stateless components actually? Let me, let me ponder. So if I look at the shard where the source client, where it actually works, the like the exact same setup, I guess the versions might be a bit older. So, okay, this is a stateless component as well. And the app is a stateless component, but those components are not stateless, but they are not stateless simply because they need state. Okay, um, I mean, let's, let's actually try. I, why not? Export default class home stands react component, right? Oh, whoops, render return. Uh, so we want to render that. Uh, I will be very surprised if it actually requires state to work. Um, constructor, this state, uh, world, world, yeah, well, let's, I mean, let's, let's even use state because why not? Why you are not happy again? Um, gonna remove that. We're gonna say this state world. I, I think it wants super. Right, okay. Okay, so if I do npm start now. Right. Uh, and let's see. It really wanted state, which is um, slightly ridiculous, but hey, it, it actually works. So that's a good thing. And uh, I, I needlessly modified all of that stuff here. So we can roll that back. Serve, what did I, I added the define plugin, which is fine. And uh, yeah, so this is now stateful. Um, yeah, we don't need semicolon here. So I guess this is fine. Um, get status, get, let's see, get diff. So what we did, we, did, we added um, git add serve. Get NSM add uh, the node env to webpack using a define plugin. Plugin, okay. I mean, I guess it does make sense a bit because detecting the React uh, stateless components is a bit tricky because it's just the functions in the end and. Um, guess you need to actually know what is a react component to uh, wrap it into the hot reloading right so kind of makes sense but not quite straightforward so uh, change home to 
let's say make home a stateful component to make hot reload demo work. Let's, let's call it this way. All right, so we have what? We have React, we have Webpack, we have React Router, uh, we have a bunch of loaders. Um, what else do we want to set up? Let me have a quick look at actually at my um, Google document where I wrote down things I wanted to do, but I don't actually remember that much more. So we might wrap it up over here. Let's let's just see for a second. Okay. Um, that was my lecture outline. So for the web stuff, React, React Router, Webpack, um, I guess that's basically it. So uh, if you are watching right now and you have any questions with regards to any issues or uh, tools that I've used and issues I had, I will be happy to answer them within the next uh, like two minutes while I close this stuff and push everything to the uh, remote so I will make uh, once again as usual uh, like 10 15 20 minutes video that will go through all of the parts that we just created and um, actually explain what I did in a bit maybe more detail because you know so some of the cases that we did right now I took quite a lot of time to figure out why the things weren't working uh, I mean the not exactly perfect documentation of React Router is one to blame for some of that. Then the um, I, I'm not actually sure if uh, H the, the React Transform thing. Uh, let me have a look while you're thinking about your questions. I'm gonna go ahead and read about a bit about the uh, Hot Reload Transform uh, from the Dan Abramov. Uh, da -da -da, enables blah 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 experimental tech. Blah, 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 blah. That is fine. React Native. Yeah, no, that works for React. No, there are no mentions that actually doesn't work with um, stateless components. But I guess the Hot Loader 3 should be more stateless components friendly because I, I, like, from what I understood from following Dan around, is that the React guys want to, in general, move to more like functional style of writing things, which, if you ask me, is pretty awesome. Okay, um, yeah, I guess let me just uh, push that stuff online. Um, one of the shortcomings is that basically, uh, since I pushed it to the same repo that we had the server, the server will be now rebuilt, even though there was like zero changes to it. I guess it might be a good idea to figure out or maybe to set up the builds only on the uh, tags. So that might be a good idea. But uh, yeah, do we, we are lacking readme and all that kind of stuff, but I think we can set it up later once everything is kind of working more or less. And we also need to move that badge, I guess, to the top level because it does make sense to have it now in the uh, inside. Uh, but yeah, this is basically how you suffer with the unreleased technology to set up the new React.js project. I mean, actually, if you look at it, it's not that complicated. Uh, the web pack was uh, pretty straightforward, especially since, you know, I had all this uh, loaders. I mean, again, you know, all that is in web pack documentation. So it's not very hard to do it from scratch, even without knowing stuff. Uh, one of the tricky parts is knowing this uh, sort of things like the transform runtime plugin from Babel, for example, that makes it lighter on browser, the React Optimize plugin or uh, the preset actually that makes a bunch of optimizations to react when you build it for production with a node environment equals production uh, and uh, all of this kind of you know small things that you wouldn't know about in the very beginning like then again you know setting up express server for serving is also not that tricky uh, there are some like yeah this is basically from all from the guide there um, stats conf this is something i use i mean you can just say no uh, info basically and be off with it but i you know i prefer to have some info like timings and you know colorful uh, display and file names for example that's always nice um but yeah this i think that's that's basically it we've uh, set up our react project we are ready to build our client 
and um, I guess in the next live stream I will start actually coding the front end that will talk to our back end and maybe we will need to change the back end as well um, just I don't know maybe to use course or something because uh, if we don't do that it basically means they will have to be deployed on the same origin which might bring some pain points but we'll see how it goes so Thank you for uh, staying with me through the whole video. I hope you found something useful and uh, at least amusing, you know, to see me suffer through the um, unreleased technology setups and maybe some React development. But yeah, uh, as usual, see you next time. Bye.